Okay. certain something and yes. then maybe immediately go to the few. Okay. But uh, I'm, I'm very deeply struck and moved by your musicianship. It's really, now I understand better now. I heard you warming up and you said, oh, I, oh, I don't have much tone and all that. I couldn't figure that out because it sounded beautiful in the warm up. And now I, I figured out better that uh, the, 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 the sound is beautiful. Beautiful uh, because of your musical conception. The musical conception is very profound. Like you really <laughs> feel this music, and you, you you feel the counterpoint. You feel the the, the the emotion of it. You you understand the articulation, which is going to give you that certain. Like there's so many nuances in this this stuff, and, and uh, like 
Okay, it's it's not a happy piece. No, 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 no. And yet there's something that's not it's certainly long, not depressive. It's a longing in it. Yeah, there's there's poignant. Maybe that's yes. a, yeah. yeah. I mean, what if we could find the word? But I can't find the words. No, that's a from a, a Canadian musical. Um, uh, but it's like got a sensuousness. Yes, it's got many things. It's it's a little patetico. But it's not whining. No, it's yeah. it's. I, it's I see it integrity. as it's kind it of a, a, there's a sensuous quality. Like yeah. if you want to know my my story behind this, I'm thinking of like his wife, you know, his second wife saying, "Yo, hon," like calling him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I'm thinking of. Basically, that's exactly, especially in that. That other middle section, but yeah. Fantastic. Any anyway, you're communicating that, so that makes for the beauty. But I also saw why you're not happy with your tone. Yeah. Because so it's, it's this question of great musicianship overcoming a certain technical limitation. And it has to do with the, the same thing we've been talking about all day. Uh, it's just like the this little thing, this center of the hand, the functional center of the hand. Now we can't grow an arch obsessively and rigid in a rigid way, rigidly. But it's somehow you're just you're taking it out of the picture. Mm -hmm. Like look what I just did. You see, I'm there, and I just did that. And you see, it's already somehow it's depressed. It's it. Th this thing just went, <laughs> and then because we were taught to relax, that's we think that's good. Well, and and then. You're not satisfied with your tone, although the music is speaking beautifully. But if you didn't have in the hand, but, <laughs> can you imagine what what you could do? Uh, and then immediately this wrist is less stressed out because as soon as we have in the hand, then the wrist. It, it's got to do something, okay? I got to do something, man. I got to do something. What do I got to do? I don't know. I'll, I'll, try, I'll try this, and then it's worse. You know, instead of ah, my wrist knows exactly what it has to do. It doesn't have to do anything. It has to hang out. It's just got to hang out because when I'm walking, what walks? My, you know, my body is just walking on top of my pelvis. So as long as the hip joints are there, and do 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 Usain Bolt, da, 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 da. this is like, bang. <laughs> all the power is here, all the largest muscles of the body are attached to the pelvis, the power generator, the furnace, the engine, and the body just rides on top of it. Whew. Ah, I can go like this, because this is good. So, the analogy, but my hand is not like this. Like now, now there's the legs and the pelvis and the torso vertical, but you see, oh, it's now that when we play piano, all this supposed torso is horizontal and down here. But the functional, the functional relationships apply. If my hip joint is good, all of the rest can fall into place. Uh, another thing that we I didn't talk about today because I save it for the thumb lecture. I did most of the thumb lecture today, but I talk about pianistic codependence. You familiar with that? I don't know. Sort of. You sort of, yeah. Yeah. So, so this arch we're taught to relax. The arch goes like this, and then the thumb goes, "Oh, come on, arch, you're falling down. I'm going to help you stand up." And the thumb does that. The thumb lifts, compounding the problem, mm. because now the arch feels no further needs to try and grow itself because the thumb is going to do it for me. But of course the thumb is just confirming the structural weakness of the arch and, and perpetuating it. Furthermore, now the thumb is not used to going down to play its note, so now the, the arch starts further weakening to get the thumb into its note. So it's just one problem piled upon another because they don't realize that to, to make that structure work you have to make you have to make one part functionally related to the other. The functional relatedness of the parts derives from some opposition. So I saw in your hand this 
this second metacarpal phalangeal joint inverted to the thumb. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't say in the, in the lecture today about the thumb is that I talked about this hypothenar, this thenar group and how strong it is, but the thenar group moves the metacarpal bone. Now it's very interesting because here we have three phalanges and a metacarpal bone. So I always thought the thumb has three phalanges because they move the same way the fingers move. But no, it's a phalange, phalange, metacarpal bone. Why? Because in the structure of the hand, it's in line with the other metacarpals. But it moves not like these metacarpals. Actually, we're going to discover that they move too. But that's another story. Most people play the thumb without bothering to move the metacarpal bone. That's why you see people curling the thumb so much. And so they're walking using their foot and their shin and not their thigh. They're basically walking from the knee down. And so if you got the thumb back into the game and basically moving itself under the hand, then this second metacarpal phalangeal joint would just come up naturally. And then you would have the tone you want. Okay. I think that's, that's going to solve it. But let's find out whether I'm right. Let's find out. Oh, that's the few. Although that's the point. Yeah. Actually, let's get this into copy, huh? Yeah. So I, I, I'd be interested to find a way of working on this. So let's do a couple of little, little exercises first. I'll show you some, some of the things that... Can I yeah, well, you certainly, yeah, sorry about that. Okay. And I will talk about your hips afterwards, because I want to do something in terms of Feldenkrais for, for that. But you see what I'm doing? I'm actually doing this, but very, very, very gently. You're, you're activating this I'm doing, muscle. I'm doing, yeah, I'm doing this. This, like, yeah. a, like a stroke. Yeah, but I'm yeah. starting from total, total, total connection. See, every part of my hand and my finger is in contact with the key, loosely. But I might even put my other hand on top like that. And now from there, don't even move. Just begin to think that you're going to do this. That's it. Now do about 10% of that. That's enough. And now do 5% of that. And do, now do 2% of that. Just the, the tiniest little thing. And go, but relax each time. Go back. Yeah! You see how quickly residual uh, uh, effort develops in the hand. Do this and now go all the way back to that first neutral. And then try again. And then go all the way back to the first neutral. And then try again. That's it. So when we're doing the, these kind of exercises, we've got to go back to the true neutral every time. Because if residual effort is left in the hand, then it will influence the following mo movement. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the movement won't start from all the bones being fully available. If there's residual effort in there, then the bones aren't fully available to, 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 to conform themselves into some new shape. So you have to let it go, and now let it go completely, that's right. And now the next one might be a little different, because already the brain is recalibrating, and because everything is completely let go, the brain can sense more exactly the position of each bone. Next time it might do that a little different. And, then, and you don't know, because this is beyond the thinking mind. The brain is making so many calculations that we, we can't follow them all, but we can sense, hmm, something's changing. And it changes when I let go completely and return to the neutral. Remember, the neutral is the place in, at which the greatest amount of potential energy is available. So, if I, if I have residual effort, then there's less potential energy available because it's blocked by the residual effort. If I'm over-relaxed, less potential energy is available because I have to do something to get myself into... To overcome Shade, the inertia. To, yeah. to overcome the inertia. That's right. So it's, it's returning and letting all the effort go, but being in the empowered neutral. I call it the empowered neutral. There you go. Now do it a little more. Go a little higher. That's right. And now would you please put your fifth on F sharp and your second on C sharp and do the same deal. And then again, palm all the way down here. 
Oh, you do the fourth? I do the fourth, okay, okay. yeah. So, okay, okay. so now, could, with the fourth on, could you do, could you do the two uh, fingers as well? Okay, now with your, I'll say, so now, you see, this is a very interesting moment. Because now you've got it into your mind that you're going to play Bach. Yeah, and now I... notice how different your hand is. Notice how far your hand has departed from that empowered neutral we spoke about. So now could you put the fourth on F sharp, the second on C sharp, and get the hand into that empowered neutral state. That's right. And then empowered neutral state again, like completely. And then stand up on just those two keys and then empower neutral state. Ah, but leave the keys down. Yeah. And because I articulate them, I don't, oh. I don't connect them. Okay, could you slide? Yeah, the, for, for now we will connect, but, but okay. I, we won't, we'll do it your way when we play. Okay. Could you slide forward a little bit and get more of the palm of your hand on the keys? You see how immediately that's more comfortable? Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the metacarpal bones now feel the security of the keyboard supporting them. So we slid a little bit further on, and now they're not hanging in space. They feel secure. They can let go. Bones that, have a, a, that are lying down on a supportive surface are going to let go more. And now again, zoop, just that. And then slide forward again. And this time, stand up. And slide forward again. And this time, when you stand up, let the heel come off the keys. Now stand up and slide. Oh, but when you slide down, maintain contact. Oh, contact. Okay. That side. This is like a bobsled movement. This is like, you see, I'm, I'm maintaining con contact mm -hmm. with the keys, and then contact with the keys. Slide forward, get the heel of the hand on the keys. Let the heel go. Ah! <laughs> and now, that's right. And then, and then slide back to the neutral. Yeah, and you see you want to put the, the wrist up instead of going back to the real neutral. Yeah? Which is the forward. Yeah, the, the, yeah, forward, so more of the hand is on the key, but not like that with the wrist up. Okay. With just, you see, where is that? Okay, and now slide. Forward. Now, where is that complete let go from? Ah, you see, you're very close. And some, did you feel something change yes. in your shoulder? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, you see, this is what we, we want to establish Skeletal contact with the keys. It's kind of a foreign experience for us, but when we really do that, then the shoulder will let go. When the bones actually feel, oh, I'm lying down on this solid surface, I'm fine. And then, boom, shoulder lets go. Now, may I uh, sort of check your spine out yeah, a little bit sure. here? So, you feel this point in your spine. Mm -hmm. uh, could you rock? And somehow on the chair, okay, go back to neutral, go back to your normal place. And, this time, and rock that the, the last way you did so that you're kind of pushing on my finger. That's right. Okay, and come forward. And then push on my finger again. I don't know if everybody can see that. Let's see. Oh. I just want people to be able to see what's going on. Here. So... Now, now, and now push on my finger again, that's it, and then come forward. And now push on my finger again, and this time, let your head come forward while you continue, no, while you continue to push on my finger. So push on my finger, and then put your head forward, but keep pushing on my finger. That's it, okay, and then come back to the neutral. And now put your shoulders forward while you continue to push. Um, okay, now put your neck forward while you continue to push. Them. I meant this part here. Oh. I want, no, no, this. I want this part to come forward. Well, like that. That's it. And now, and now stay there and push on my finger more. That's right. And now make this part go further forward. No, that's back. That's it. And this. And now push on my finger more. With my, this part. Uh, these fingers here. There, that's right. So now you feel incredibly hunched, right? Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Okay. <laughs> could, could you stay there for a, a couple of seconds? Just stay like that. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. I want to sh show you very quickly how incredibly hunched you are right now. I mean, it's really like... You know, your mother told you sit up straight. Right, yeah. Your mother told you sit up straight, and now you're 
going against all parental directives. You're incredibly hunched, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is what your incredibly hunched position looks like. Okay. It looks like ramrod straight to me. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. But it's all subjective. It's all subjective. So actually th with the, the, this part of the spine, that far forward, the lower thoracic spine, mm -hmm. we, we call it a, a hyperextension. Yes. And it's, it's figure skaters have it, ballet dancers have it, and people who, whom their parents told them, sit up straight, have it. Yeah. And my Aikido class in, in, in Belgrade, Serbia, the Aikido teacher says, shoulders back, hips forward. And the, and the entire Aikido class is doing this to their back. <laughs> That's not functional. Right. <laughs> it's too far forward. It's locked there. So th this exercise we did now, you're actually unlocking the spine by uh -huh. doing it, making it freer, but it does not feel that way to you. Yeah. It feels very weird, and you, it feels like you're forcing it there, because the impulse to hold yourself in that habitual yeah. position is so strong. Yes. So we can't uh, attack it head on, but we can, we can begin to create movement, so now would you put one hand on your sternum here, and the other hand on your sacrum, this, uh, the middle part of the pelvis. And now when you rock forward, you sense if the sacrum affects the sternum. So rock the pelvis forward. This way. Yeah, and where does the sternum go? It goes it's somewhere. That way. No, this is the sternum is this, oh, this way. way. Yeah, now rock the pelvis back, the sacrum goes back, and the sternum goes somewhere too. So rock forward. You can try this on your own in the seats. It goes back this way. That's right. And now does it go just go back or does it go down? Down too. Yeah. So what I would ask you to do is go forward and now increase the down. And now go forward and just increase the down. Okay, go forward. And this time help the down increase by dropping your chin onto your sternum. Whoa, did you feel the change? It, yeah, let me change. Because your chin dropped, the sternum dropped more. Yeah. See? And rock forward, and, and now feel the sternum rising as it comes up, and then falling as it goes down. So now, use the sacrum to push the sternum up. That's it. And now use the sternum to push the sacrum back. And now push the sternum up with the sacrum. Now push the, the sacrum back with the sternum. So you're developing an interplay between the two ends of the spine. Uh -huh. Now switch the hands. I'm sorry, we're supposed to be doing Baki. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and now sternum down, sacrum back. Sacrum forward, sternum up. Now. Oh, by the way, can you feel your sits bones on the chair? Yes. Would you say that the sits bones are sitting equally, or is there weight more on one than the other? Uh, you see the posture change? Look at that. Your back is about a hundred times more flexible than it was five minutes ago. It's, I call this spinal breathing. Yeah. Like your lungs breathe, but now it's as if this whole, this whole skeleton is breathing. Yeah, and now again the forward one. Okay, and now push the sternum forward instead of up. Yeah. So if I was going to, for instance, say I'm going to push like this, and now use your sacrum to push against me. Ah, there's a new direction. And now let me push the sacrum back. That's right, and now push against me. That's amazing. And then let, let it go. That's right. That's enough for now. I don't want to overdo it. These are very powerful movements. And the, the, the huge changes evoked in the spine. So you only do a little bit at a time because if you do too much, then the <laughs> brain and the body will reject it. Yeah. So, ah! <laughs> and they'll well, give me my habitual. But that's already. Do you feel different? I do, but I'm now I'm confused. I'm not like sure what the right thing to do is anymore. So sorry. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. 
So now, now just go back to sitting normally. Just uh, and so this is your. This is now sitting normally for you. If you just no, went, oh. sitting normally would probably be like this. Okay, I guess. great. Yeah. Now that normal it's is hunched actually, forward. I guess. Is well, that, no, it's not. It's hy hyperextended back. You're saying. No, I'm saying yeah. the, this is your new normal. Through that little experience we just did, five yeah. minutes. Uh -huh. Your normal has already shifted. You're way <clears throat> less hyperextended than you were. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you see how quickly the brain learns. No, but it learns by degrees. A little bit of sensation. Oh, oh, a little adjustment. A little sensation. A little adjustment. But judicious sensation and very exactly designed sensations to help the skeleton reacquire a neutrality and a, and a ease and flexibility of movement. I believe it would be easier for you now. So now, let's remember this exercise we were doing here. Put the hand on the key. No, no. Put the palm on the key. Smash the palm into the key. And now this time, when you pull, when you pull on the fingers to stand the hand up, do that. Try not to curl the fingers too much. And slide down again. That's it. And pull on them to stand them up again. This time. Watch me. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this motion to pull my pelvis forward, and then that's right. And now I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna slide those fingers away and push them to push my pelvis back. So now pull yourself forward. And now push yourself back again. Pull and push and away. Now this time let your your heel come up. Pull and let the heel come up and the. The body is following the wrist. Now push, 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 and the wrist is pushing the body back. So when you do that, yeah, follow the wrist forward with the body. And now slide back down and the wrist again. Yeah. See, this is another form of skeletal breathing. <gasps> and now power it all with your fingers. Uh, but don't let them slide, and then the pull forward will be stronger. That's right. And now push with your fingers to push the body back. Yeah. So. So this is kind of enhancing the flex the flexibility. The yeah movability flexibility and now we'll do it again and watch what's happening very carefully. Ah, that one was better. The previous one, you started rising like this and not allowing the metacarpal phalangeal joint to come up. You actually did one like that. There, that's your habitual. And you see there was no power. And now make that knuckle go sky high. And you feel how much it pulled through into your body more? Yeah. Yeah. And let it go. So remember, when you're doing this and pulling the body forward, if the knuckle does not come up, that's magnificent. That's like Kilimanjaro. <laughs> okay. I don't know. You don't have any mountains down there in Dallas. No, not yeah. too many. Yeah. Now, OK, again. This time, pull. And let, let the wrist respond. Let the wrist respond. That's right. Yeah, the more the wrist, I feel the more the wrist responds, the more the body is going to be able to respond. That it can't get blocked here and it can't get blocked here. And I'll do it with both these fingers. That, oh, no, now you moved forward with the body, but you did not with the pull the body forward with the arm. You understand? Okay. Yeah. That's the connection. You, you asked me about the shoulder connection. Well, there it is, you see? Okay. This I is enough. This. Now, yeah. uh, we didn't do anything in the left hand. Would you now please play me the right hand alone? Remembering the feeling of the hand that you got by having this experience. Is that any different for you? Yeah, I mean. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that was a nice one. You like? Yeah. Let's do an experiment. Can we have Professor Dashney come in and I know you're not a piano professor, but you are now because <laughs> okay. your left hand is Professor Dashney, and I'd like to introduce her to Deborah. So here, like this. Professor's just going to check out what you're doing.
Mm -hmm. Can you go on? Okay. Mm -hmm.